Okay, so we are going to look at some of the negative reviews for Let's Go Eevee and then maybe Let's Go Pikachu if I can be bothered later on depending on how long Let's Go Eevee takes and I haven't looked at any of them yet but let's hear up a rule of thumb here for any you know fake reviews that were either like botted or just put on there just to bomb it um, you know just to lower its rating because they just want it to fail or whatever and the, the and these guidelines will be no photo in the um, you know on the, on the account now uh, that will usually indicate that it was solely created usually yeah it will usually indicate it indicate that it was solely created just to just as like a second or 50th account to uh, just bomb something that they don't like um, if they don't put any comment or lack of commentary on the game that will usually indicate that they they just wanted to put the bad review on there and then move on to the next bad review and you know again and again and again to lower the score um, and it, uh, um, anything else I might indicate a fake account um, I think there was something else but I can't remember off the top of my head if I remember it I'll, I'll say it but later but yeah that that's gonna be the basic guidelines for that for now so um, let's go Eevee user score right well you know credit score 81 user score 5.4 basically 54 Like, there's usually some disparity between critics and the users because um, usually critics will be more hesitant to be critical of a game because it this can and does happen where um, critics get fired uh, because the company gets sued by a company when they give a negative review. But 100 more negative reviews than positive for Let's Go Eevee. Okay, let's have a look here. First off, these negative reviews are not review bombing, they are just the honest expressions of how some people felt about the game. Oh my god! Jesus! Uh, I bet Pokemon em be Pokemon Emerald in three days when I was five years old. That being said, Pokemon Let's Go Eevee and Pikachu, they're the same game. Don't be suck it. They've always been the same. Let's Go Eevee and Let's Go Pikachu have pretty much have the same amount of differences as um, Red and Blue, uh, Ruby, Sapphire, um, Gen 3, that was, uh, Gen 2, Gold and Silver, Gen 4, Diamond and Pearl, Gen 5, Black and White. Gen 6, X and Y. They have pretty much have the same amount of differences apart from one, where they don't have an exclusive legendary Pokemon, which I think is probably for the better, meaning that you don't have to reset to your get, trade over all your Pokemon, reset the game, you know, trade over all your Pokemon to a friend, reset your game, and then get them all, catch it again, and get them all back so you and your friend can have one of the legendary Pokemon. Uh. Uh, dumb down to the bim No, they're not. Like, uh, you have catching Pokemon and you have battling Pokemon, just like it always. You have, you still have the gym battles. You still have, um, almost like an EV system. Or that, that, that's what we, you still have IVs. You still have natures, items, and abilities are gone. But the um, items weren't even introduced until Generation Two. And abilities weren't introduced until Generation Three, so um, you st you still have a bunch of stuff in there that uh, you know is not the bare minimum. Uh, also on XP share, no big of uh, issue though. Pokemon Go Wild Battles, yeah, I love that. It's uh, a it's really fun. It's really cool just seeing the Pokemon there. It's it's better than uh, just uh, walking through the grass and then oh a random Pokemon encounter or walking through a cave. It's a it's a lot nicer. Uh, constant 
It doesn't constantly handhold you. Uh, friendly rival. Well, actually, and uh, Game Freak has actually come out to to say why they they've been doing friendly rivals, and that's because you know it's um, it's better received than an, an antagonist rival, and uh, when you're you know selling a game, you want a game to be better received, so you're going to do what makes it better received. No abilities, not a big issue. No held items, not a big issue. Only the first 151 Pokemon plus Meltan and Melmetal. Not a big issue, really. Like, um, what about black and white? The, uh, in, through the entire story of that, you could only catch, you know, uh, the about a little over 150 Pokemon that, that were newly introduced. And it wasn't until the post game where you could actually catch more than that. But, you know, why is that okay there, but not in Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee? Uh, game Corner does work. I mean, it's not gambling because of gambling laws, but, you know, you can't really expect them to go against gambling laws, can you? Uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, problem with going back to Kanto, because I really like Kanto. The issue lies in there are no new places to Mm. Right. So he has no problem with going back to Kanto. But the problem is, you're going back to Kanto, and nothing else is just like, you don't have to put anything else in. It's Kanto. Like, seriously. I swear, I've been taken out. I don't know, I really did. Oh, Sevy Islands. Sevy Islands, right. They haven't been taken out. Because they were put in, in the uh, Fire Red and Leaf Green, so you could catch Generation 2 and, uh, uh, yeah, just Generation 2 Pokemon, which would not really have a place in Let's Go Picture and Eve because it's only the one original 151, so it would be pretty much pointless. And here's the thing it's a reimagining of Pokemon Yellow, not Fire Red and Leaf Green, so they weren't taken out, they were never put in in the first place. Uh, I would really like to visit Johto afterwards. Yeah, I would have liked that. But it doesn't make it a bad game. Not being able to visit Johto. Uh, mind you, again, it's only 151, so how would you make Johto without the Gen 2 Pokemon? Uh, I'm not going to read through all this because it would take me way too long. Uh, the game... Oh, fuck me. The game may not may not look appealing to some, but do not be fool. Oh, may look appealing. Firstly, let's say this is a main series, as Pokemon has been saying, and not core, i.e., red, blue, yellow, green, to Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon, and the game is in between. Game is if this spawns a series of Let's Go games, creating its own separate thing, then whatever. However, the, cra the craze of Pokemon Go has largely died down since 2016. Although the game, uh, game still has, uh, has over 2 million active users, it seems odd that Pokemon Company has even bothered to draw uh, these players closer to the core series. Yeah, because, oh, 200 million people, extra, nah. Well, we don't need, uh, need to even try to get them across. I mean, it's not like 200 million Times fifty or sixty if you're if you're doing this. Oh, hold on. So let's see. Two, twenty hundred million. Two million times fifty. Oh yeah, we don't need that. One hundred million pounds. And that's if all of them only bought one copy of the game. There will be some that would buy two, or the Nintendo Switch bundle, which both cost more. And then you also have the Pokeball Plus. Yeah, we don't need any of that money. Um, via the weird hybrid of the two. It's not even a weird hybrid of the two. Like, you have some features from Let's Go with, like, the... Um, po being able to see the Pokemon before you encounter them. Um, and the new catching mechanic. 
But that's just about the only thing they brought from Pokemon Go. The only other thing that you could really say is that they replaced the Safari Zone with the Go Park. But nobody really liked the Sa Safari Sa Zone anyway, and they made all the Pokemon obtainable in the Safari Zone obtainable in the wild. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, not starting this without reason. The core series constantly set sold over 10 million with exception to installments like Emerald, Crystal, Platinum that sell over 5 million. Total core series sales is just over 230 million units. The beginning of the last generation, Pokemon Sun and Moon sold over 16 million making an attempt to, to add 2 million. Go players at least seems to be pointless. Yeah, because again, we don't need any of that many. Um, right. Uh, he, this is talking about lifetime sales. You can't expect... Um, oh, actually, they put a TLDR. Not worth 60 US dollars designed to appeal to the very small, stunted children. This game is badly bad. That's just so much wrong. The only way I could describe it is badly bad. Anyway. Um, it's just like, if you want, if you want to say, and then you also have the fact that um, Sun and Moon and Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon had a lot, very big advantage. Um, pretty much the same advantage that uh, Gen 5 had, had actually, because Gen 5 and um, 7 both had big advantages because they were coming off very popular um, generations. Generation 4 was very popular because it was, uh, to quote the Silver League ne Network, it was basically lightning in a bottle. So Gen 5 uh, was ba basically, could, should have basically rode off the wave of Generation 4. But it decided not to, and that was one of the biggest reasons why it failed, because it just did not do anything clever. Um, and Gen 7 had the, the fact that they were rode off the wave of, did what Gen 5 didn't, and rode off the wave, re wave of Generation 6, which, we, which was uh, the uh, successful revitalization of the Pokemon franchise after Generation 5, with X and Y. Just like Gen 4 revitalized the series after um, Generation 3. And then we had um, Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, one of the most popular remakes, uh, only second to Heart, Gold, and Soul Silver themselves, which are widely regarded as the best, best Pokemon games of all time, again in Generation 4. So, yeah, Gen 6 already had that much of a, you know, advantage over Let's Go Picture and Eevee because. Gen, uh, not Gen 6, Gen 7, because, let's face it, Gen 7 did not, you know, Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon was not as popular as X and Y and the Mega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. Um, so yeah, Pokemon Let's Go just didn't have that advantage as well. If they had any interest in the core series, they would have already picked one up or start, well, not, not really, right. So here's how, um, you know, people like would have fallen out of the franchise over years. They would have like picked it up at Generation 1 and maybe continued on to Gen 2, but after like Gen 3, especially like after Gen 3, they were falling out for one reason or another. Now, and this is the same reason why they got to back into, got into Pokemon Go, because it, it, it was... Gen 1 again, it was the generation they remembered, the game, you know, the Pokemon they loved. And this is uh, the same uh, um, idea as Pokemon Let's Go. It's going back to the generation that they love, so they're more likely to pick up. Um, when I went to go get my copy of Let's Go Pichu uh, uh, with the Pokeball Plus and let's, a copy of Let's Go Eevee, um, I saw a man and his wife walk out there with no children, with a Nintendo Switch with Let's Go Pichu. Uh, Pikachu or Eevee on it. Um, and that's just like, people are going out and buying Switches for this game. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure if uh, um, if this is going to 
in you know entrancing a lot of people who have left the franchise after Generation One and may even um, get them into the main you know the next uh, big core series game, making them even more money. You're getting what I'm saying here. Uh, which is with it so it kind of seems like a waste of time to make these games objectively no in your opinion in your opinion it is but looking at how much money it's gonna make them or could make them and at, uh, at everything else and the fact that the reason why uh, let Pokemon Go's popularity dropped off so much is because it wasn't really that fun to walk around for half an hour catch a couple of Pokemon and uh, that's all you really had to do and the Niantic really just uh, killed Pokemon Go pretty much by just not doing anything right I mean Pokemon Go Fest that was completely organized by Niantic the first one completely failed it crashed and burnt but that doesn't mean that the idea of going back to Generation 1 with a Go style or Go, Go like game was bad. Otherwise, they wouldn't have had all that initial install base, would they? Install base, would they? Uh, positives of the game. Looks nice. Yeah, hard direction HD. Um, super easy. Uh, yeah, yeah, I have to admit, it is a bit easy. Um, I pretty much only had four main Pokemon on me, a, a Gyarados which completely wrecked, which I used for most of the game, I wrecked most of the game, um, a Mew, a Gengar, and a um, Clefable. Now granted I did get the Gengar and Clefable a little over leveled because I got them from my friend, but anyway. Uh, Pokemon walk around with you, yeah, that, that is a feature from our Gold and Soul Silver that a lot of people have been asking for. If you're a newcomer, the games only includes the first 151-ish Pokemon, so is uh, completing the deck isn't as, uh, you know, bad as, yeah. Uh, negatives. Uh, the game costs 60 USD, 80 Australian dollars, if, uh, like me, you live in Australia. Okay, so normal price, yeah. The gamers on uh, the hand, handle, handheld line is where about 50 US dollars ish only and a $10 increase. Yep, a $10 increase for a game that's 80% less uh, content. Oh boy. No, you still have all the content, you just have not as much many of the Pokemon. And just to. S right. You're saying, oh, yeah, because you have less Pokemon, that means the price should go down. No, just as much time, effort, and resources, and most importantly here, money has gone into doing it, making this, if not more. Because uh, modeling a mod, uh, one single model on the Nintendo Switch will cost more time and money because of the detail, and, and they also have to do the shadows, would cost more time and money than doing it on the 3DS. I don't I don't know exactly how much because I haven't looked into it and I don't even know if you can find that. But I know it would uh, cost more time and money to rent to do that and then you have to get all the models working and the coding. Um and you can and the, um, and you can bet your uh, money that um, adding the Pokemon walking in and you know in uh, 3D Pokemon walking around would have added a lot more time and development in there because you would have had to get all of the Pokemon that you can encounter while uh, uh, modeled there and then walking around properly and then you also have the walking mechanics so you have to get um, the models for that for them running and walking and standing and then you have to uh, uh, do extra models for when you're riding some of the Pokemon so there's just so much more stuff that needs to go into making the game uh, also the fact that they're building it from the ground up where Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon and that, uh, even to some extent Sun and Moon would have had uh, um, the basics laid out from the previous games. Uh, Mew is... I've made videos on this. 
and I'll make one more video on it just to prove my point because these dumbasses don't seem to listen. Mew is not behind a paywall. Yes, you can get it from a Pokeball Plus, but even since Generation 1, there's been events for Mew. Every generation, there's been an event for Mew. Gen 1, Gen 2, Gen 3, Gen 4, Gen 5, Gen 6, Gen 7, and Gen 8. And there will be events for Mew in Gen 9, Gen 10, Gen 11, Gen 12, Gen 13, Gen 14, and Gen so on and so forth. And uh, I'll uh, explain how I am undoubtedly correct in this in a video. But this one is completely mute because they don't know the fuck they're talking about. Uh, I've already talked about this in the first one. Uh, yeah, I will. I will admit it is a bit easy, but you can also. You, but what you can do is you can impose artificial rules upon yourself to make it harder if you think it's too easy. Uh, has a sudden. Of I've never experienced any frame drops. Uh, is still. Yeah, I will admit that is something that uh, pixelated shadows. That is something I did see. Why is this a this a switch that can one doom with decent fidelity and frames? The art style is for I like the art style. So uh, the characters, the characters are the same characters from Gen One. So. If you're com if you're criticizing the characters, you're criticizing Generation One there. Uh, mind you, the games didn't really do much to um, uh, make them better. Mind you, I did like Jesse James and Meowth; they were quite good in it. Uh, they introduced Meltan just because I, I don't like Meltan either. Uh, well, probably just to um, add um, a reason to connect it and let's go. Um, to and then people to buy it for complete Pokédex. The music is uh Meltan is not part of the Pokédex completion. It's not only way of tra Okay, this guy obviously doesn't know what it takes to make a po to make a game because twenty dollars No like um, 20 US dollars. I'm willing to bear that's about 15 UK pounds. Yeah, no, you're not going to... No, 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 no. You're never going to game like that. No, that's way too that. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, fine. Uh, it really... It's really just Pokemon Go on the Switch. Why if I don't want the Pokeball Plus and I just want a Mew? I'm going to... Wrangle the next person who says this in front of me. It really is just a soulless cash grab on nostalgia and the hype that's around the Pokemon. Pokemon Go a year or two. Also, there's tons of graphical errors, especially with the overworld when the Pokemon is basically clipping through your plane. Yeah, the, I kind of made that. If you position yourself right, you can slightly clip the Pokemon into yourself, but. That doesn't make a game shit. Um, but yeah, he obviously either hasn't to play, either it's just leaving a bad review for the sake of a bad review, or um, saw a little, little bit of the game footage and just decided to base everything off that. Uh, it's a cute game and the music is amazing, but I think it's all that's all that can be said is a as a positive here, you cannot t strip down features from a series that was already ex 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 uh, baby's first RPG and expect to be fun. Moving wild encounters makes uh, training Pokemon feel even more lifeless to me, perhaps because you don't even get to, to see your Pokemon on the screen half the time anymore it just feels so hollow which is a shame because there, there was a lot of potential to charm here this sounds like it was just based off trailers um, because that's all the only information you get here is information from the trailers um, uh, let's start here uh, 
again, you're not even stripping down most of the features, you're stripping down a couple of features. Getting rid of a lot of the Pokemon, yes, but you're still keeping the, the essential 151 Pokemon, which were the original Pokemon that built up this fran that started the franchise in the first place, and took over the world for the first and second time. Um, and then you're just removing um, abilities and items, which again weren't around until Gen 2 and Gen 3 respectively. Um, uh, yeah, that's just about the only thing that's being removed. Uh, I really tried to give this uh, game a chance, oh, please tell me it's not chance, but it's like they decided to make cutscenes the central theme. Not really, I don't see how you get that, like that, yes there are cutscenes, but it's only like when you're, talk when you're talking to a major character or major, like, plot is happening, and that's not a thing unique to this. Uh, Gen 2 had, Gen 1 had cutscenes, Gen 2 had cutscenes, Gen 3 had cutscenes, Gen 4 had cutscenes, and I think Gen 4 was, Gen 3 and 4 was really the start of like, the cinematic t style of cutscenes. Gen 5 had even, went, uh, uh, had even more, went slightly more cinematic, like, um, uh, slightly more cinematic than Generation 4, with its cutscenes, and Gen 6 had full on, like, cutscenes, and then Gen 7 had, uh, even uh, I do even more cutscenes, so yeah, just saying. Oh, it's a cut the cutscenes are the theme. Of this. It's just like I don't think it has any more cutscenes than uh, the normal Pokemon game. So you like you have the beginning cutscenes, which every Pokemon game has. Um, you have the cutscenes where you get your original Pokemon. Uh, your fit your starter Pokemon. Well, granted, you do have two small cutscenes there. Um, you have the cutscene meeting blue. Um, and, uh, and you have all the cutscenes talking to the gym leaders, which all Pokemon games have. Um, you have cutscenes talking to Team Rocket, which was in the Pokemon Yellow. Um, you have the cutscenes talking to Giovanni, and the, the, uh, uh, the one Team Rocket admin. Um, what else? Uh, you have the cutscenes with Snorlax. Um, which wasn't from Gen 1. Um, yeah, not really that many new cutscenes, just like one or two new cutscenes. Uh, but disregard every other aspect of the game. No, catching is fun. Uh, while it is mildly annoying when they do that little animation, and that, that is mildly annoying. I, I assume that should have stayed in Pokemon Go. Um, oh, I need a drink quickly. Uh, yeah. But now, um, the, the, um, what was I saying? Uh, the other aspects of the game have been, uh, and well thought about, like, um, even, uh, let's talk about Mew quickly. Now, what they could have done is they could have just taken Mew from previous generations and basically cut, copy it and paste it over with everything. But no, they haven't. They actually took special care in Mew and it actually changed its uh, um, level up set because um, now they're psychic at a later level. So you can't get psychic because I remember psychic was a really early level. So they didn't want you just like steamrolling everything with psychic at, at the beginning of the game if you got the Pokeball Plus. Uh, resources were allocated into customization. Yeah, you have more customization with um, not only costumes for you but your partner Pokemon. Petting your uh, Pikachu or Eevee, riding your Pokemon, making sure you get to have a comfortable time overall. But well, comfort is like a yes, bias. You add it to a dish when you can't expect a single-handedly it to single-handedly redeem every single bad decision. The gameplay and mechanics aspects was slightly neglected. 
collected. Not really. They took, they basically took some of it from the, the uh, core franchise. They took some of it from uh, Pokemon Go and we and they put it together and we find it to work together. And then changed up but, um, a couple of those mechanics a little bit. Um, it's not like they just co copied and pasted it over without any care of how they would interact or anything. So you end up having a ridiculously easy game. I, I, I will say it again, it is a little bit easy, but again, you can always add um, artificial walls to make it harder for yourself. Boring and unengaging. I, I actually like, I no, I've had a lot of fun. Like, um, I've played since Generation 1. Well, because of my age, I played Gen 1 and Gen 2. During Generation 3, then went to Generation 4, and, uh, and uh, skipped to Gen 5 because it looked uh, from black and white, it looked bad, at, and I was right. Um, got back in Gen 6, and it was about in between X and Y and Auras when I really started getting into the Pokemon community and YouTube community, and that's when I learned about Generation 3. Um, and the, but I did play uh, Pokemon Coliseum before then, so I technically played a Gen 3 Pokemon game before I knew even knew what Gen 3 was. Uh, boring and unengaging uh, catch mechanics. No, I I like it. Um, uh, it's better. It's better than just like bag, pokeball, use. And that's seriously all that the last few Pokemon games were. Especially uh, well, once you got access to quick balls. Quick balls basically allowed you to catch legendaries just by going bag, ball, use. Okay. Like, it's not even in my opinion, like, um, every time I watch a, um, you know, let's play of a Pokemon game, it's like, Quick Balls, the best Pokeballs. Oh yeah, we've actually lost quite a few of the Pokeballs, haven't we, brand new, it's not that big of a loss. Um, painfully, a painfully dull battle and EV system. Okay, Eevees aren't even in the game, so I don't know where, where he's getting the EV system from. Battling system is, is, is exactly the same as uh, um, every uh, Pokemon game before this. There is the um, candy system, but that's a lot different to the EV system, almost. Right. Um, yeah, it differs from Eevees because um, instead of having Eevees, you have these candies, and by getting candies, you catch Pokemon and not beat them in battle. And then uh, the more and the higher catch combo you get, the more candy you get. And you can even get a species candy, which increases the stats of, or, you know, all the stats of that Pokemon. Um, so yeah, um, it uh, actually there's only two things you need in this in Pokemon. Um, Let's go to have a good Pokemon. A um, good nature, good move. Uh, well, there's three things: good nature, good moves, and the good IVs. Good nature you get uh, by um, using Madam Madam Celadon, I think her name is. Anyway, she basically guarantees a nature. You get good IVs by getting a gold bottle cap and the leveling your Pokemon up to level 100 and then increasing the stats by that way. And you get good moves using the HMs and TMs and level up. Um, and they've also removed moves that wouldn't make any sense like Simple Beam and Worry Seed because they remove abilities, EV system and all of this take. And, and the, um, you don't even need to do the candy system because um, you can do the flash rules thing, which um, only takes into account those things and it uh, doesn't take into account candies. Takes place in the same old Kanto we already know by memory by now. Yeah, it depends on how many times you played it. Um, but yeah, there's nothing wrong with it being set in Kanto. Because it's not like Kanto is a bad region. Now you know that was a bad region because it was extremely linear. Um, and now I'm, I know I'm probably going to get a bit of flag from this one, Max, but the reason why you know there is a bad region is because it is extremely linear. 
in both Black and White and Black and White 2, you start off in the bottom left corner of the map, basically, on these two separate little islands. Like, if I, that's if I'm remembering everything correctly, yeah, because I think it's mirrored in the second game. You get you do the first gym battle on that on that little island, and you go then you go to the same city, uh, that same city in the center near the center. Um, I can't remember its name, but then you make your way all left around uh, you know the and uh, you know beat gyms and uh, uh, progress through the story like that. Where in Pokemon uh, Gen One, the uh, you know you go to Brock, then Misty. Then you're basically free to go wherever you want. Most people usually do Lieutenant Sage first, but you could go, you could skip Lieutenant Sage and go to anywhere else, pretty much. You, you know, from there, the adventure is your own to make, and that's that's pretty much the last time when you could do that because every game after that, I did get to all the gym badges. You know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, with sometimes with bits in between um, to do a story. Uh, sure, it might be fun for new players, but it's very single for every single other Pokemon game. Simpler mechanics don't end up mattering much when Pokemon is already simple and approachable by design. And uh, not so much in the in the recent generations. Um, Gen one, yes, it was definitely simple and approachable, but it definitely did get more and more complex over the generations. Gen two added um, Pokemon evolving at ta different times of day and uh, um, bet held items, which wasn't that complex back then. But uh, let's get back. I'll get back to that in a minute. Gen 3 uh, added, uh, may have added more held items, I can't remember, and also added uh, abilities, which which is one of the most complicated, more complicated things in the game, because um, some Pokemon only have one ability, but so, some Pokemon have two possible abilities, and uh, then, you, and, some po and some abilities make them immune to certain things, such as Lightning Rod, and do they also affect double battles, which were implemented in Gen 3? Um, so the battling system got a lot more complex in Generation 3. Gen 4, um, yeah. Gen 4 did make it a good bit complex with. Um, I, th I think this was especially when Battle Pass got really popular with Driftblim, minimized stockpile Battle Pass. Um, yeah, let me think. What did Gen 4 add to, add to the balance system? Well, more abilities, more items, um, and all that. Gen 5 added more items and more abilities and hidden abilities, which were a pain in the ass to get in the first place. Gen 6 added Mega Evolution, which uh, Ultra Sun and Ultra, uh, Let's Go did keep. Um, uh, and the dwells did it add. I think I added more items. I know um, Sun and Moon added more items, at least one more item. Um, uh, you know, Gen 7 added, added Z moves, which were even... So yeah, it just got more and more complicated. And then you also have the EV system, which was added at some point, I do believe. Gen 2, I want to say, maybe. I can't remember exactly when that was implemented, but the EV system was implemented. Breeding was implemented. And that, uh, you know, the, e trying to explain EVs and IVs to somebody is not easy. Uh, and those games offer a lot more than LGPE, uh, let's go, Pikachu EV does. Um, not, well, if you're saying a lot more Pokemon, yes, but, um, a lot more like in fun and everything now. Like as somebody who completed um, the Auras decks and the, the um, Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon decks and Sun and Moon decks, that was not fun. Like having to scour the region, catching all of those Pokemon. 
evolving all of them. That was not fun. And, uh, um... Well, there has been frustrating moments in Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee trying to complete the decks with, like, Cypher. And I have been live streaming this, so you can go to my live streams and uh, see how much fun I've been having. I've just been having fun just there. Okay, I gotta get this Pokemon. Let's go over there. And go get that Pokemon. And, yeah, I have had a lot of fun completing, uh, the, the original 151 decks. Overall, it's not a bad game, per se. Just lacking and a bit of a letdown because you know Game Freak is capable of much more might not be the best thing the series needs right now either. So, it's not a bad game, but you gave it a bad rating. And people say uh, people are uh, uh, putting uh, uh, giving this game uh, bad reviews just for the sake of bad reviews. Please tell me this is in a thousand weird essay. Ah, oh, Christ! I'm not going to read those thousand weird essays one because um, you need right when you write a review, give it substance, but don't make it an essay. Just like hit on some points. So like. If I were to write a review for this game, um, the casual mechanic is fun. Um, uh, the art style is lovely. The music is on point. Um, the battling is the same as uh, um, every previous generation. There are a couple of um, graphical glitches with the um, shadows and the. the um, your Pokemon coping into sometimes, but overall, fun, enjoyable, and uh, all around uh, a good Pokemon game. Okay, here's something. If you buy this game, you're saying you're okay. Fuck you! Fuck you! Fuck you! Fuck you! I am sick! I'm tired of having to repeat myself. Mew is not paywalled. It is just another way you can get it to incentivize you to buy the Pokeball. Plus, you will be able to get it from an event, you fucking idiots. Bye, jeez. I'm going to have to go to the gym later on and punch a punching bag to just lay off this anger. Oh! Okay with saying big fuck off to competitive players. Not really. I played Pokemon competitively and it's not a big fuck off. It, uh, the only bit where, uh, let me see. No, there's nothing that says a big fuck off. It's a, it's a big fuck off to assholes who don't like fun games. Okay with removing core mechanics. So, such as, I mean, the only... Battling still, I mean, you could say battling wild Pokemon with your Pokemon has been removed, but you still encounter wild Pokemon. You still catch wild Pokemon. And you still get XP from uh, beating wild Pokemon, so I don't see. Uh, uh, okay, with going to the same region and over and over because blind nostalgia sells. No, it's not blind nostalgia. I, I have criticised uh, Gen One myself. I I made a series like how easy was red, blue, yellow, red, blue, and green, because a lot of my friend, because a lot of people I knew back then was just like. Uh, the new Pokemon games are so easy. Pokemon Generation 1 was so hard. And I was like, no, it's not. And I proved it then. It was quite easy for me to play through it. And I do have my criticisms of Generation 1. While I do love Magnemite and the, the Magneton's all right, and I do love Magnezone, I do not like Grimer and Muck. But it's not blind nostalgia that uh, got me to buy Let's Go. It's because I genuinely like Generation 1 and the Kanto. Kanto region, and it's been a while since I've been back to Generation One, and uh, you know, back it's been a while since I've been back to Kanto, and uh, 
they're genuinely fun games. Okay, with names like Splishy Splash and Baddy Bad. Okay, with never having actually post game again. Uh, I still have my criticisms over those names. Uh, I do feel they're a little bit bad. Um, but again, you don't have to use them. You don't even have to use Pikachu or Eevee. And uh, no, we really having a post game. Eh, you can battle the Elite Four again, I guess. But I guess the post game is mostly just like game you to gain the legendary beers if you haven't already gotten them. Um, let me think. What else? Hmm. You are getting catch combos, getting shiny Pokemon. Um, getting competitive Pokemon and then uh, battling people online. Um, okay, with garbage graphics. Yeah, because oh yeah, the the Let's Go Picture and Eevee with upgraded graphics, upgraded you know visuals and everything. Yeah, they're garbage, but yeah, um, Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon graphics are perfect. Yeah, bullshit. Uh, when the Switch is capable of much more. It depends on how you look at it. Um, it is heavily stylized, which um, does limit it to um, how um, it does limit it to how um, where it's, um, you know how nice it can look to certain people like. To me, somebody who loves the cartoony style and the, like anime kind of style, I love it. I love how it looks. It looks beautiful, but for, to somebody who likes more gritty and realistic looks, then it's not going to look as good. Uh, this is more of a matter of opinion. Do you like the cartoony style, which Pokemon has always had since... Uh, well, you could debatably say only since X and Y with the 3D style. Um, but yeah, it, it's a massive improvement over everything we've had previously, graphically speaking. Um, and, it, uh, and the next one, next Pokemon. And it's not like they're going to go all out on the first um, game on the Switch. Like, um, if you look at X and Y. Uh, that was on the 3DS. X and Y does not look as good as Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. Now, if they had made X and Y look as good as Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, which they possibly could have done, then where would they go from there? There's nowhere to go. You see, you have to build up to um, m the best you can do for the console because if you uh, because if you don't, then you just then you're just in a dead end with nowhere to go. And, it, uh, and the next game is just going to look exactly the same as the last one. Um, okay, with the franchise dying in... Oh yeah, because Generation 1 is in the spirit of the franchise. Yeah. No content, easy and boring as hell. Not to mention it looks horrible despite being on the Switch. Does not look horrible. Uh, not boring because I actually have I've actually had fun getting catch combo so to increase shiny odds and to increase rare Pokemon spawns. Easy again. I've talked about that, but again, uh, no con. Again, original 151 Pokemon was enough content to, to launch the entire goddamn series. With a little bit of help from Gen 2. Terrible game, nothing of value to be... So we can probably say that one was just put there for... Um, uh, you know, just for hate giving it a lower score because... There's not much substance to this. Like, it's one line of... Uh, uh, stuff is where this is they've probably I will say they probably have played through and have their own fair criticisms but um and these maybe I can't be asked to read them because they're way too long but this just looks like 
you know, they uh, just uh, put just type it out for five seconds. Uh, tell game nothing of value to be found if you're a veteran player. I'm a veteran player, and I found a lot of value here. And if you're a newcomer, you'll have a better you'll have better luck playing literally any other game. Yeah, no, he's obviously not played it. A step back, nope. No, obviously never played. Like there's no, 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 no. Don't mind. Uh, the most expensive Pokemon. It's not the most expensive. Every it's the same price as every Pokemon game that came before it. Pretty much, if you uh, well, actually if you count Generation One with inflation, it probably cost more. Um, Gen. Uh, let, let's start from Gen Six, X and Y. 50 quid each. Um, Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, 50 quid each. Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon and Sun and Moon, 50 quid each. It's the exact same price, you dumbass. Gotta catch them all, except this time it's not about the. You do know Gotta Catch Em All originated in Generation 1, and they actually uh, ditched that to saying later on. Because they know, knew how hard it became to actually catch them all. And how unfun it was. Absolutely terrible game. Pokemon has uh, been going down in quality since X and Y. But this is a new low. Not recommending it. Yeah, like, you can... I'm probably... I'm going to presume this one is just hate for the sake of hate. Since X and Y. I played in X and Y. I enjoyed X and Y. I played Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. I enjoy Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire a lot more than X and Y. Uh, because it actually had more of a post game. Like, not much more, but it was like going around catching all of the legendaries from previous generations. Meaning that you didn't have to spend half an hour transferring them all from Generation 3. I only want to know 53 Pokemon and a few alternative forms. Despite the previous remakes of Fire Red, Leaf Green, having all Pokemon from Gen 1 to 3, no Sevi Isles despite Fire Red and Leaf. This is not a reimagining of Fire Red and Leaf Green. This is a reimagining of a Pokemon Yellow. Uh, franchise, let's get anything. Don't really know how long is this going to be. Battle system is exactly the same. <laughs> they didn't remove wild encounters. You still encounter wild Pokemon. What low effort... Sp right. Citation fucking needed here. What low effort spoon feeding mechanics are there? I wanted it, like when I was an adult, I was like, oh yeah, I'm all in for that. That's for this game, but here we are. Going to Kanto for the twelfth Twelfth and the time. Twelve and time. Like, if you can if you don't know that it's twelve uh, Yeah, that that would be twenty second time, but it's twelve T H twelve not twelve and Time, you idiot. You are obviously yet too young to actually know how to do anything. Don't be fooled, Pokemon Let's Go is uh, not the love letter written to you by Game Freak it, in hopes of reigniting your passion for Pokemon as it uh, were back uh, during Pokemon Mania, nor does it introduce uh, Pokemon. Oh, for fuck's sake, I'm not reading all that. Pokemon has always been kind of friendly and especially accessible to newcomers. The dumbing get down the mechanics for no reason but to see how much money they can make. With a low effort game, shouldn't it be encouraged no matter the franchise? Please don't support uh, com compan campaigners being uh, slime companies being slimy and holding uh, back on you. <laughs> Okay, let's get started with this one. This one was obviously written only for hate. 
because they obviously haven't played it because, uh, well, otherwise they'd uh, be uh, biased and doing what they said, what te they're telling other people to not do. So obviously you haven't uh, played it. Um, and yes, it always has been accessible to newcomers. But it's not always been friendly to newcomers. Yes, any newcomer can pick up generations 1 through 7 and play through them. But not all of them all understand like EVs, IVs and natures. And then after like playing through the game, you know, going in, the, going online, the, you know, to play with other people, they're just going to get trapped because there's going to be other people who know about those type of things. And in this, it's a lot friendlier to those people because, again, they keep golden bottle caps from uh, Sun and Moon and also Sun and Moon, so that makes it easier to get uh, perfect IV Pokemon. <gasps> And it, 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 um, there's a format where um, it doesn't even take in the candy, so... Anyway. It may just step back. No, it's not. This game is not that bad if you had... Fuck you. Starting not Right. I'm just going to ignore anything that just starts off with an insult to anybody who actually likes this game. A remake with uh, less to offer them. Well, actually, it's a reimagining of... Yellow, not fire red and leaf green. Fuck you. This game clearly suffices its natural audience by running any shred, ruining any shred of difficulty the game had. Prior, here's some gripes we all oh, don't fucking. You are. Okay, this is a lie. Okay, I'm not even going to touch on anything else because this first one means they definitely haven't even played the game. There's no PC, so you can only have the Pokemon in your party. If you press Y or shake the uh, Pokeball Plus, you will access the PC from your party. So you obviously haven't played the Pokemon game, dumbass. I'm going to have to Google Translate this one. Control C, Google. I'm going to write in Portuguese an extremely tedious, naughty game played lazily. The shadows of the game are ridiculous. The mechanics they took away from fighting wild Pokemon was the worst choice they ever made, as capturing tireless Pokemon seasickness in the early hours of gameplay. Despite changing some elements in the story, it is extremely sickening because I have played countless times in the Kanto region, but the game, despite being for the children's audience, is overly infantil- Okay, I'm not gonna listen to any, just- this game is is better. Uh, this game is for children. Um, hold on, seasickness. How do you get seasickness from playing a Pokemon game at all? Like, um, I know there were some people who got a little bit sick from playing um, Skyrim on the Switch in handheld mode, but that wore off. And the de and the de they de they stopped feeling sick after playing it in handheld mode for a little while. So, how do you get seasickness from playing? I don't know. Obviously, not really. I used to have unwavering faith in the franchise. Went in almost blind, expecting great things from this latest new. Inst installation not anymore all that uh, waited me was a one washed out experience of a game I think he means worn out I already played at removing and worsening them you mean change ing you know the thing everything does Change. Um. All right, listen. The there there's so basically 
um, the pe people who are complaining about the p franchise changing, changing are the same people who complain that the franchise never changes. Right, I know all of these aren't going to be just like fake reviews or just reviews put on there just to create some hate for the game. But when there's such a disparity between the meta score and the user score, you can't really argue with the right um, with there being at least some people um, making fake reviews. Um, and that, uh, I'm just gonna give it a ten. Uh, connect with my Facebook. Why not? Let people know what my Facebook is. Yes. Oh, this is taking forever. Anyway, I'll do I'll do that. Um, oh, wrong one. I'll do that. Um, I'll do that. Um, you know, after this video. But yeah, um, I can't be bothered to keep on reading through them because if I do. Like this bottle was pretty much full at the start of this and I've already gone that far through it and I don't want this video taking forever. So while there are some fair criticisms of the game, there are quite obviously some people who haven't even played the game or bought the game that are just leaving um, with fake reviews just based off trailers. And uh, you can do uh, and uh, the right when the uh, the, when there's this big of a disparity between audience and critic ratings then it on any review site then you definitely know oh, so I've been invited, invited to play Minecraft I'll do that later anyway you definitely know that there's some foul play in action you, you know that somebody one side or the other is inflating the score in one direction and it's definitely from my point of view here it's definitely um the audience either leaving fake reviews or just not you know playing the game and leaving negative reviews and that that does happen i'm not saying that all the negative reviews are fake but i'm saying that a heavy majority of them will be being as there's not even a single bad critic review like um, let's just go here. Yeah, just close that. Um, user score s scores. Um, I think it had the um actual numbers here. Almost as many negative as positive. So two hundred twenty-four to two seventy one. And you're saying that none of those 224 are fake or um, just there to bring down the, the score for hate reasons. You are incredibly op optimistic, my friend. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video. I just wanted to um, just show how absurd that some, people, some people's hate for this game is. That they all go out of their way to make fake reviews just to bring down the ratings on it.